Our first one's going to be from Rick, and he wants to know what changed between the Old Testament giving and the New Testament giving. Yeah, well, that's yeah, that's a that's an important question, also a pr pretty variegated question. I mean, the short answer is the uh, the theocracy went away. <laughs> I think that's probably the easiest place to start. I mean. It, on, on my website, I think for anybody who's listening and interested in the subject of giving and tithing, if you go to drmsh.com and put in the word tithing, that's T-I-T-H-I-N-G, you're going to get to a blog post where I have links to a two-part article series uh, on tithing that I think is really well done. So that would give you the the details of, of what I'm going to what I'm going to say here. Um, not the two articles aren't things that I've written, but I they're written by somebody else. I just think it covers really all the bases and does a good job of it. You know, once you have the, the theocracy gone, that affects a lot because the tithing system of the Old Testament was meant to maintain the priesthood of the, this whole theocratic system that we think of as ancient Israel. You know, when the temple goes out I was going to say out the window, but when the temple, you know, burns down, you know, it, it, it's gone. And now there's still a priesthood around, but there were certain parts of the tithing system that were linked to certain things you did in the temple. Okay, that that's going to naturally change things. Um, you know, when the temple was rebuilt, I mean, it's not quite what it was in, in Solomon's day. You don't have political independence. You don't have political autonomy. Uh, like you did under the days of, of, you know, David and Solomon, a lot of the Old Testament laws about tithing certain resources, you know, just went with a certain lifestyle, a certain way of life that was geared to having a country, having that country run from a city, having a monarchy, having a temple, all of that gets gets shuffled and changed, you know, with the loss of a temple, the loss of a theocratic way of life. Now, you still have, you know, people in synagogues, like in after the temple is destroyed, you have the synagogue system develop. You had people teaching in the synagogues, and, and they, you know, could still like, expect, I think, both culturally and, and scripturally, um, that the idea of supporting those kinds of people, especially if they, they are still in the role of a priest, even though what they do now is is somewhat limited, again, in the absence of a temple um, or the same, you know, kind of uh, system and setup, they, they still, you know, have the right to be uh, supported and maintained. You know, this is the way it was just generally in the ancient Near East. This is how priests lived. Their livelihood came from contributions, you know, sacrifices, maybe contributions of land or you know, physical goods, metals, whatever, you know, this is this is how they live. Now, in the New Testament era, again, when the, the whole people of God moves away from having an, an ethnic identity and a theocratic identity, so to now we're including, you know, Gentiles in, in the very fabric of the people of God. In, in the New Testament era, according to what the New Testament says, everybody's a priest, priesthood of the believer. So by definition, that just doesn't conform, you know, to the Old Testament system. And this is in part why you don't have a carryover in the New Testament of of the, the tithing language or the system of the Old Testament. Now, Paul, though, taught that he had the right to this kind of support as a servant of God. I mean, he didn't he didn't take it. He decided, you know, to do, you know, do tent making, you know, to support himself. But he does remind, you know, readers, like in the epistles to the Corinthians, that he, as an apostle, he could have demanded, you know, this sort of thing and would have had, you know, ground to stand on, so to speak. But he doesn't do that. Again, that's in place, even though it's not a priestly model so much like the Israelite culture, the Israelite system, what we we read in the Hebrew Bible, you know, that there's just this presupposition that servants of God just generally— should be supported by the believing community. If you think about the Old Testament, there is this sort of system of support outside the direct theocratic, monarchical sort of situation. The prophets, for instance. Okay, there, there, there's no like, you're not, you're not going to read in the, in the Torah, 
about specific tithes going to prophets. The prophets were something different. They, you know, they were people raised up during the days of the monarchy, the united monarchy, the divided monarchy, again, to, you know, God raising up essentially covenant enforcers. That's what prophets were. They would preach to people about being loyal to God, loyal to the covenant, and all that sort of thing. Well, those, those people, just culturally, it was assumed that they, you know, somebody's going to support them. You know, Elijah, you know, had the situation with the widow and the room and board, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Th- there were people in the community that would contribute to recognized individuals that were considered to speak for God. And, and that, that's kind of what Paul's drawing on as well. Um, you had Isaiah, who was sort of a prophet of the, of the royal court. You know, he, that was a little bit different. He's probably getting some support from the monarchy itself, you know, at that point. But there's what I'm pointing to is there's just this assumption in Scripture and by example, the, the legitimizing of the assumption that servants of God should be supported by the community. So broadly speaking, that's intact, even if the theocratic, you know, tithing system is not, even though that doesn't survive from Old and New Testament, the general idea does. Uh, this gets muddied a little bit in the New Testament because there, in the New Testament, all the passages that that pastors like to use to convince people that they should be tithing. If you actually look at those passages, it's let's just use you know what happens in the Book of Acts and Paul. Paul is going around collecting money for the saints in Jerusalem. Okay, you, you don't you don't actually have this this weekly giving system for individual churches. Paul doesn't go into a church and, and, and start preaching tithing for that church. Wherever he goes, apparently, because he brings it up a lot, there's this notion of, hey, you know, you sister churches here that I'm starting and that I, I started or that I'm, I'm, I'm in your presence now, you know, all of this, the gospel, you know, started back with, the, with Jesus and the disciples, and there's this Jerusalem church that's notoriously poor they're under persecution all the time, and it's pretty big, so that kind of compounds the problem. You know, he he takes up collections for them, for a, an altogether different church, and that's actually what you see described uh, in in the New Testament. You don't have a new tithing system for individual local churches laid out. You have this general assumption that the laborer is worthy of his hire, but then the actual giving passages are really for a, this one church back in Jerusalem. So you don't have a whole lot of scriptural structure for this. But what, what happens is, well, the Old Testament's in our Bible, and so we're going to preach tithing, even though that was Israel and the theocracy and the priesthood, even though we don't have that. And I, I, I mean, I, I understand that, but I, I think we're better off, and I think this is what the New Testament actually does, is it teaches the principle of giving. It teaches that the laborer is worthy of his hire, and you should give cheerfully, you should give sacrificially. It's not about a certain percentage. You, sh- you should contribute and give what you can. And you know what you can. You know what sacrificial is. You know, what, you know, you, you know whether you're sort of not doing your part or whether you are. And, and the New Testament leaves that up to the individual. But it lays down the principle of, of cheerful giving, sacrificial giving, and the labor being worthy of his hire. It doesn't worry about strict percentages like we had in, in the theocratic system. So there really are no New Testament rules about tithing, but there are very clear principles about the Lord's servants being supported. Uh, it's just that we don't have this strict percentage system layout uh, like we do in the Old Testament. 